Hello everyone, this is Rick, and welcome to Astral Club. This episode is Astral Visit to a Primitive Alien Planet. Before we get to that, just want to mention uh, you can support Astral Club on Patreon. You get uh, uh, to see the videos in advance on Tuesday rather than waiting to Saturday. And there's no commercials. And secondly, you can uh, message me uh, directly and you know offer questions and comments and I can do my best to uh, to answer them. So uh, if you're interested, there is a link in the description. Okay. Um, it uh, uh, kind of a lot of stuff changed um, just recently, as you well know. Um, I had some problems. After visiting uh, the planet uh, I named Amphibia, had some discussions <laughs> with that council and told them that I had to seriously consider whether I wanted to be a part of them. You guys gave me some good advice and I decided that I was going to stay, but I was just going to let them sweat a little bit. Well, earlier this week, I left my body and I decided to search out my angel. Now, normally he would call me, but I have a pretty good, as Robert Monroe would say, ident for the conference room, which is where we would usually go uh, to meet. So I went there and, and sent out the signal in a head in advance that I'd be coming to, to meet with him. So when I began consciousness, I looked around me, and instead of my familiar angel in his typical well-groomed and tailored suit, I found this 20-something, maybe early 30s looking individual, dressed kind of hip casually, um, and I was confused. I said, um, who are you? And he introduced himself and said, well, I am your new angel. I said, the hell you say? Where's my angel? He said, well, he's been demoted and I have been put into his place. I said, okay, hold on a second. First of all, what's your name? And he said, um, my name is Caduceus. I said, wow, that's a mouthful. How about I just call you Cad? Listen here, Cad. You seem like a nice millennial angel, um, but I'm not, you know, in the market for a new angel. I have one, and we have a strange relationship. Yes, I know, um, and he doesn't always get my jokes, but we got this flow going now, and I'm really not shopping for anyone new. So nothing personal, but um, why don't you just take me? To him and everything will be just fine. He said, I'm sorry, I'm just not permitted to do that. The council has appointed me and I'm supposed to, I stopped him right there. I said, look here, Cad, I'm going to either tear this place apart looking for my angel or you're going to take me to him. And my guess is that you are either new and I'm your first assignment or you've pissed someone off and they decided to punish you by assigning you to me. I'm gonna make this real simple. I want you to take me to my angel or I'm gonna tear this place apart looking for him. I don't think you want that. He thought about it for a minute and then just decided to uh, take us both. When I regained consciousness again, um, Cad was standing nearby and there was my angel, but he wasn't dressed in his suit any longer. He was wearing um, work clothes, you know, dark blue pants, a blue shirt stained with oil and grease. And, and he was engaged in some sort of manual work. And I said, hey, what's going on? He looked at me and said, Rick, what are you doing here? And I said, well, what are you doing here? He goes, oh, well, I guess this is a conventionalization that you, your mind would associate with what happened to me, um, I've been demoted. I said, well, thanks for all this, I guess. But why Why were you demoted? He said, well, um, I had a talk with the council um, after 
what they did to you and they, how they manipulated you. I know it was for the right reasons, but what they did was was wrong. So I uh, so I talked to them uh, about it. <laughs> I said, "Well, that must have been a heck of a talk because here you are, and and uh, over here I got Cad, uh, who says he's my new angel." And my angel said, well, yeah, I guess he's the guy who's, who's your new one who's been assigned. And I said, well, I really don't care because you're my angel and you're not getting rid of me that easily. Next, I asked my angel if he could send me to the council room. And he asked, well, what are you going to do? I said, nothing. I'm just, just going to talk with him. He says, are you going to, are you going to get me in more trouble? I said, not at all. I'm just going to talk with him. That's all. So he said, okay. Cad started talking a little bit. You tried to interrupt. I just put my hand up and I said, when spoken to? The adults are talking now, Cad. And then he, he quieted down very quickly. Uh, at any rate, uh, the next place I found myself when I regained uh, my awareness for the third time was in the council chambers and they welcomed me and they said oh great we see that you've decided to uh, continue with us and that's great because I believe there's another assignment for your guide class so if you like we can transport you there I said yeah well we can definitely talk about that in a second but I just want to make sure we get things clear here yes I am coming back but no more of this funny manipulative stuff because if that happens again, I'm gone. And secondly, I want my angel back. Um, and then the and then the head of the council said, "Well, isn't uh, isn't Caduceus uh, to your liking? We can get you another one." And I just said, "Look, he's fine for you know being what he is. But I already have an angel, and I want him back. And I'm not going to go anywhere until you put him back in charge of me." And st promote him again back to his spot so they talked about it for a little bit and i guess they came to a consensus and they said very well we'll meet your demands and then without any further ado <laughs> i woke up a fourth time this time in the uh the astral guide school class and it was in the midst of the actual class and i just kind of faded right in and listened to what they were up to um, it seemed the mission this time was to find a primitive alien planet somewhere in the universe and see if you could jumpstart life. Uh, I raised my hand uh, or whatever else you have to do to get attention. And I said, look, um, I must have missed that class. How do you go about starting life exactly um and he just kind of looked at me the instructor like he was a little annoyed and he said well uh it's kind of late to get into this now but you're a quick learner i'm sure you'll figure it out so that pretty much shut down that little question um so i just listened for a little bit while longer and then they sent us on our way and i found myself floating in um interstellar space and I realized that I needed to try to find some alien planet so I sent out this broadcast signal at the same time I extended my awareness looking for some sort of a primitive planet where uh, I could see if I could start up some sort of life I don't know um, I kind of searched around for a little bit and then I was drawn to this particular area of the uh of the universe and i was drawn there um it was it went by very quickly and i lost consciousness yet again <laughs> and when i came to i was hovering over a planet that didn't look very promising to me uh, i guess i was expecting something that looked like earth you know maybe more primitive but this didn't um, it, um, it was a definitely an, an Earth-like planet, um, and it had a satellite, which I thought was promising, 
I don't know whether it was the same size as the moon, but it was it was a large satellite that was circling. Um, it had uh, a sun, which looked not too different from our sun, and but the atmosphere of the planet was orange, and I didn't know what to think about that. So I dove into the planet itself and went through various layers of gases. And as I said, the predominant color in the atmosphere was orange. But I had an even bigger shock when I fell beneath the cloud layer and I saw a huge, a huge ocean, but it wasn't blue. It was a pinkish color with some purple highlights. I think I, I, think I saw those. And um, I tried to extend my senses to see if I could detect any signs of life. But it was a little difficult because there was lightning that was transpiring everywhere. Um, and what that does is it makes it hard, at least it does for me, to sort of extend my senses to see if I could sense something. Um, it also, though, on a positive note, uh, hyper-energizes me. Uh, when I'm in yeah, an atmosphere that is laden with electricity, like you're flying through a thundercloud, for instance, um, you become highly energized. It feels extremely good. Um, but, and, but this environment was hyper-energized with all of this static electricity taking place. Um, I um, decided to see if I could find some land of some sort. And so I soared up further higher in the atmosphere and I found some volcanic type um, land that had pulled itself out of this weird pink sea. And I headed for that because I quite frankly wasn't quite sure what I was supposed to be doing here now. Um, but it was all very alien and all very interesting, so I was enjoying myself to some extent. When I got to the volcanic rocky land, it seemed pretty lifeless to me. There was um, these hydrothermal vents with um, smoke coming out of them. They were um, periodically um, washed over with... Um, with this this pink water, um, various pools, um, some of them small, some of them rather large, had um, had carved out little niches, uh, and they were probably replenished from frequent um, flooding from the the sea, and and perhaps that satellite that I saw, that moon, was uh, was causing some uh, some tidal activity, in which case. I may be here, I may have been here at low tide, I may have been here at high tide, I really had no idea. I took a moment just to stop and look around me. You know, it's interesting sometimes, when you ask to project it as long as I have, you start taking a lot of things for granted. Um, just having this channel and sharing all my experiences with you guys, over all these years, to me, it just seemed like another day. It wasn't out of the ordinary to me. It wasn't until I presented it to you guys that you you revealed to me just how interesting and, and how special these experiences were and that perhaps I should, you know, stop and just kind of check out for a minute and see how cool all this is rather than always be concentrated on what I should be doing next. So I just stood there and looked around and you know, I saw this blackened rock that I was standing on and I looked up at this this uh, beautiful pink sea as it was surging back and forth looking up into this orange sky with its billowing clouds and this fierce uh, thunderstorm uh, that was uh, occurring and just took a minute to just admire the alien beauty of this wishing that I had the artistic ability to actually draw this or paint this when I came back. Uh, it's a shame. But as I was 
admiring this, taking a moment, one of those lightning bolts hit me directly. Uh, I was energized before because of all the electricity in the air, but 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 one of them hit me directly, and it was unlike it was a feeling unlike I've ever had before, including all of the astral projections that I've ever enjoyed. Uh, it was like my entire body was just humming with this this power, like every cell was vibrating at at a high rate, and. You know, it's was, it was like for a moment I could see infinity. I, I, I could feel that I could reach out and just not only hug this planet, but the whole universe. And in that moment, I projected a spark of what I was feeling into a pool that I was standing over. And it was quite unconscious, but it seemed like something somewhere it was moving me like there was some voice in my head that had become amplified when i was hit by that lightning bolt and suddenly i knew what i had to do and it just happened without me even thinking about it any more than that and as i gradually came down from this this heightened ecstatic feeling that i had i looked into the pool and if I was able to focus my astral vision down to a very tiny microscopic level. I was able to witness now that there were seemingly little cells that were now moving, that had taken on some sort of semblance of life. So I, through the you know, the help of this lightning bolt and whatever astral energy resides within me, I was able to jump start perhaps on this planet itself. I don't know. Uh, but I certainly was able to jump start something here on this volcanic rock, on this alien orange pink planet, some sort of life. Um, so I figured, well, I guess my mission is done here. So with that thought, I returned not to the council room, which was fine with me, not to the Astral Guide School, because I figured, heck, they probably know I, I accomplished my mission anyway. They usually always knew. I went to the conference room. And in the conference room, there was no more uh, CAD, no more hip millennial angel. I'm sure he's a nice guy. It's just not my thing. Anyway, there was my angel dressed up like he should be in his uh, three-piece suit, wearing his expression of uh, uh, mild disapproval that I like so much. And uh, he welcomed me back and dryly congratulated me on uh, accomplishing the rather interesting task that I was asked to accomplish. And I, of course, uh, tried to restrain my enthusiasm for his return, but I certainly welcomed him back and uh, told him to uh, stay out of trouble. And as I was fading away, I think I saw a little bit of a smile out of the corner of his mouth. Uh, with that, I returned um, to my body and uh, took a bunch of notes and whatever because of all this, uh, everything that happened. Well, that was the experience, um, and I hope uh, you found it interesting. I think I'll probably return at some point, uh, probably in the farther future for that planet, to see if anything happened, uh, anything progressed from there. It'd be kind of neat to think that I helped to you know, jumpstart some primitive life that might one day many billions of years in the future, perhaps, turn into something else. That would be that would be very interesting. At any rate, if you liked it, hit the uh, like button. Share it with those of like minds. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always, I love your questions and comments. Please offer those. Uh, I'm sure folks like Photios will have some things to say, and I'm counting on it. And uh, if you want to help out Astro Club on Patreon... 
there'll be a link in the description. As always, I am Rick, and I will see you on the astral plane.